Hey guys and what's up, it's Total Eclipse here with the practical build guide of 24 tips in what I hope will be under 15 minutes to help make building your dream factories easier and satisfactory. So if you do find this video helpful, make sure to hit the thumbs up and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. So let's get into it. Firstly, I need to mention for all the newcomers, build on foundations. It'll allow you to scale your factories and help with the organization and make everything neater. But now for the real tips. 90 degree turns are easily done. You can either do this by placing a conveyor pole two spaces away from the center of the output or input, or the other way is hovering the pole over the position you want and using the mouse wheel to turn it to the intended position. Our third tip, walls with conveyor poles can also be given 90 degree turns. For an outside wall turn, you will need to place the conveyor poles on the furthest point along the joint so they're closest to each other. For inside turns, however, you need to place the conveyor poles directly on the center of the walls. If you are moving items between a structure and a merger or splitter via an elevator, place the first structure and then place the second structure two spaces away from the first. This should give you a really snug fit without any clipping. It's also good to know that you can run a conveyor line for a total of six foundations long in length before needing to place another pole or wall. Now, this is a really good tip to know if you're building buses and don't want to use extra resources. Also, pipes can run for just over six foundations as well. If you want a symmetrical factory, build from the center out, or if you're placing a grid first, make the active grid an odd number. This will allow you to place a center doorway. And of course, yes, you can build a symmetrical factory with an even number, but you'll be struggling to place a symmetrical doorway down. Corner ramp downs are one of the few clippable foundations. Now this is very useful for building in spaces where you are prohibited, such as on top of a walkway. You can then delete the foundation after you've placed whatever you need to, or if you prefer, you can actually use two of these ramps together to create a whole foundation where in normal circumstances you wouldn't be able to place one. This also means that you, if you want to cover up your conveyor elevators, for example, or pipes, you can do it using these. There are two styles of feeding your factories in this game. We Well, we could argue three. You have load balancing, manifolds, and you could argue a hybrid between the two. But after the startup time, they're both as efficient as one another. The difference is load balancing or what you could also call a perfect split, is that they look great because you have constant moving items along the conveyors. But manifolds, however, are super easy to scale up. So if you're starting out, I recommend using manifolds. You can check my guide on it actually just in the top right hand corner right now if you, if you want to know more on that subject. Here's another tip that's really useful. Always leave more space than you think you will need. You'll probably end up needing the extra space eventually, even if you don't need it straight away. Conveyor poles and pipe poles raise in increments of two meters. So if you want an increment of just a single meter, delete the foundation below and add a one by eight foundation at the bottom and build a pole off of that. You can now cover it using the corner ramp downs. And as you can see, we have some really close conveyors compared to the original two meter incremental conveyors. Foundations can be used to create circles and also curves for railway tracks. For a guide on circles, click the top right hand corner now, but for curves, you want to place a foundation where you want the curve to be. From there, place down a reinforced plate, a steel beam, and after you want to put a spool of wire in the middle. 
jump on this and delete the neighbouring foundations then, look down, rotate the foundation, I recommend using 1x8 foundations for this, jump and place it. Then place a neighbouring foundation and delete the centre one. You'll need to place two more foundations underneath it, but they'll almost be in the same altitude as your previous line, making pretty neat lines and making it also easy to make gentle adjustments to your tracks. Now the awesome shop is the source of 90% of your solutions. Trust me, if you need better conveyor logistics in your factory, awesome shop offers the answer. Need better power pole logistics? The awesome shop has the answer to that as well. If you need a break, grab a coffee. The awesome shop has that as well. Here's one for the Factorio players amongst us. You're not restricted anymore to build on one level. If you need to build vertical, you can. Although I do recommend spacing large factories apart to save a few frame losses. Here's another one. You can use conveyor throughputs as a limiter. So, for example, conveyor belts are the major bottleneck in this game. However, you can use this as an advantage, believe it or not. If you have a Mark III conveyor with 270 coal on it and you need to feed four power plants, a total of 60 coal, you can just use a splitter along the bus and split using a Mark I conveyor to limit the throughput. That way you will have 210 coal on the main line and 60 cent off to where it needs to be. Our 15th tip talks about the red box bug. Now this happens when you're building an item and switch to the delete button. Now if you're hovering over the item being constructed, it will appear with a red box. So don't switch to the delete item if it's being constructed. If you want to change the colour of your factory, you can do this instantly by changing the preset of your default colour. Now do this by building the paint gun, right clicking and editing the first paint preset. This will also mean that every structure that you place down on the default preset will also look this colour as well. When it comes to placing pipes, you can change the build style by holding down R whilst you have the pipe selected. You have the choice of default, which is whatever is best for the game. Vertical gives you the tightest turns next to the inputs and outputs. And the conveyor 2D gives you the same angled turns as you would get connecting that point with a conveyor to another point. Oh, and on the subject of pipes, pipe pumps can be placed directly on walls, but the next tip is that you don't need to use as many pipe pumps as you think you do. So water extractors, oil extractors and refineries run by using head lift, meaning pipes will transport liquid up to this height. So if you have a, a water extractor that's 200 foot in the air, you can pull the water down to 50 foot above ground level and then pull it all the way back up to 200 foot in the air. Now we can actually go one further with this and have a water extractor at the top providing 120 meters of water per minute and then we can place a water extractor at the bottom of a ravine like you can see here, providing another 120 meters squared worth of water per minute. Now, if we join them together with a splitter, we can now bring the water from the bottom extractor all the way to the same height as the top extractor without the need of pumps. So yeah, I agree, it's slightly broken, but you can use that to your advantage. So tip number 20, if you're using staircases, you'll die a lot. I mean, you just need to watch my 5x5 five five challenge. I die all the time, it's becoming a meme. So you can actually fill the center of the staircase with something. Now I'd recommend using something like a conveyor elevator to bring items up, or you could use a pipe for liquids, or should you wish, you could use a hypertube as a mini elevator between the bottom level and the top level. Or for that matter, 
Uh, you can actually buy the pillars in the awesome shop. I told you they have the answer for everything and you can place them up through the middle as well so you'll never fall off again. And the good thing with this is it looks like your staircase is fully supported, which looks great. Tip number 21, when building railways to make a 90 degree turn, you need to place a straight line to the edge of one of the foundations, then place the curve along the far end of a three by three grid, and that will give you a nice 90 degree angle. Now, if you want to build across the ceiling, Either build a floor directly beneath the ceiling and then place the conveyors and delete the floor or place conveyor walls using the six foundations length we discussed earlier. This will save you from using conveyor stackable poles to run the conveyors throughout your factory. Speaking of which, when it comes to buses, you can build cool buses under the ground by placing half ramps as the base of your factory. And from there, you can place the conveyors through the middle. Then cover these foundations with glass and you'll get this kind of look, which in my opinion, looks awesome. Walkways are also an amazing way to add an industrial look to your factory and can make the factory look like a totally different game for under and above factory feeding, but they can be a real pain positioning. They have two positions on a foundation in which they can be placed on. So if you build a walkway and find you have large gaps between your factory and your walkway, that are implaceable for another walkway, consider using a foundation and starting the walkway from the middle rather than the outside. You can also clip these walkways through one another and this will also give it a much tighter look. So there you are guys, that's 24 tips for practical building in Satisfactory. Now, if you did find this video helpful, then please do drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and let me know which was your favorite tip in the comment section below. Also, we're very close to releasing our website, which will have a lot more written guides and factory layouts on it. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled in the coming weeks for satisfactorytips.com. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.